Hey, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel, and this is the first ever tech talk tutorial type thingy video I make on this channel. Uh, I mentioned it a few weeks ago, I want to start a new series adding more videos to this channel. Um, and these videos will be about game design, game code, um, more technical, that's why I call them Tech Tuesday videos. Um, this is gonna be the first one and it might be the last one, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you think this is interesting and if you wanna see more videos like this. Basically what I wanna cover and talk about are um, alternate solutions to certain game design or code problems. That's what this series is gonna be about. I'm gonna show you code and solutions and design solutions uh, to problems that I encountered creating my games. And uh, the first one is gonna be uh, uh, Pretty random but interesting. So, um, see you after the intro. So, I wanted to create a mission screen for a new game I'm working on, and uh, I have never created a mission screen like this. It's pretty much like you see in many games these days a pathway, you have nodes, and you can, as a player, decide which mission you're gonna play until you reach the end boss or the end goal. And I never created a node system like that. I have no idea where to start. So the first thing I usually do is Google for it. And that's probably the first tip I can give other game developers. If you have a question and you don't know the solution, Google it. And I quickly found a Reddit post um, where the original poster who asked the question had a solution, but he wasn't happy with it. And um, I think he was pretty close to actually solving the problem, or at least for the mission map I want to use. But everybody answering him gave him such complicated solution. It, it, they came up with algorithms and, and weird bubbling procedures, creating bubbles. And, and I get it. If you're a programmer like me and you do code, things like this look awesome and amazing. And you want to try it. But it's often not very, uh, it's not the best solution. It's not the easiest, not the fastest. So I base my solution on what the original poster was asking and was trying. He had an array, a grid, and he was very much on its way, except his pathways were crossing and intersecting with each other. And I basically think that's not a big problem. So I came up with my solution for this and I started to build my version based on that. All right, let me first show you the results of my code because that makes it a lot more clear what I'm aiming for and what I got working. So uh, here you can see uh, the node map that I was aiming for. It has a lot of variation. It has um, nodes that are reachable by different nodes that are connected to multiple nodes and, and nothing is crossing lines or anything. So here I have all the nodes activated, even those that aren't used. And you can see that this is pretty much a grid based solution with the little exception that some of the grid nodes have a little vertical and horizontal offset, making the map look a lot more interesting but that doesn't really change a lot on the data behind it. It's just a grid based and a map based and you can make this as big as you want. You can add more rows, you can add more columns. It's pretty flexible and um, that's my solution. That's how it looks. So uh, let's dive into the code and how did I get there? So what this code does is it creates a node at the top, it creates a node at the bottom and then it creates random paths from the top to the bottom. The amount of random paths is defined here. Um, it can be three, four, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that your array is big enough to handle all those paths. And then what we do is we set up the top node and we set up the bottom node because those two are always there. Um, the bottom node isn't required because you could just have multiple paths where the player can start. But for my game, I want to make sure there's always one starting node. So that's why I add the starting node first. And then we simply start adding random paths, which means we pick a node, then we pick a random direction, which is uh, left, middle or right. And then we select that node if possible and available. And then we do the same thing again over and over until we reach the bottom node. So having done all that, I came to the conclusion that the original Reddit post also had, sometimes your nodes are crossing streams and you know, we never want to cross streams. Everybody learned it from Ghostbusters. Don't cross your streams. So how to solve it? Um, pretty simple, actually. It means that one that both these nodes are connected to the nodes crossed below them, which means we just have to remove one of those to fix the problem. Um, and we can optionally remove both of those crossed nodes and just make sure they go, both go straight down. So what we do is um, 
we find nodes that are connected to the node below them and we find the node next to them that's connected to the one below us and then we remove them based on randomness. So we either remove both cross nodes, both connections to the nodes below us, and then we just go straight down because we want to make sure those nodes are still connected. Or we decide to just remove our own cross node. And in the last case, we decide to remove the other one's cross node. That's really the problem solved. So the original poster had a pretty simple problem and it was pretty easy to solve. And he was much closer to a solution than whatever all these other people have mentioned or told him to do. Of course, you can do it with other algorithms and you can do it with a lot more code and a lot more. This has limitations. I know that this is very limited, but for what I want with it, this kind of works. So the last step is just rendering it onto the screen in a nice fashion. And that's why I gave every node a random horizontal and vertical offset so that it doesn't look as much like a grid, but it adds a little bit of uh, playfulness to it and looks more interesting visually. And um, that's my mission screen. Right, and that's it for this first tech talk. Um, again, these tech talks are gonna be about various topics and they're just gonna be my solution to things. Usually those are very simple solutions and um, they're optimized for being um, easy to create, very short and hopefully very fast code wise because that's what I like about coding. And it's obviously not the only solution and there are probably other solutions and maybe even better solutions but it's often a, a very flexible, very quick and very simple solution because I like doing things in a simple way. That's me, I'm simple. Um, anyway, that's it for this first one. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. And if you have questions or ideas for Tech Talks, let me know down below and um, I'll see you in the next Tech Talk, whenever that is.